I am going to be comparing my 2019 Mac Pro Tower against the all new 16 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max processor. How does Apple's new portable machine compare to its most high end desktop? Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here and you can find me on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. And I have my 2019 Tower Mac Pro as well as the new 16 inch MacBook Pro here with me today. And we're gonna be running through comparisons on terms of IO and ports. We're gonna look at performance and benchmarks in actual real world tests. And finally, we're gonna discuss the pros and cons of each of these devices and why they still may both make sense despite one of them having some pretty darn impressive performance. Let's start by going through which machines we're actually using here. Starting with that Mac Pro. So I have a 2019 Mac Pro Tower, which has a 3.5 gigahertz, eight core Intel Xeon W desktop class processor. It also has 384 gigs of RAM in there with 2666 megahertz DDR4 memory. And the graphics card is an AMD Radeon Pro 580X with eight gigs of memory. That compares to my 16 inch MacBook Pro here, which has the M1 Max processor, as well as the 32 core GPU and 32 gigs of memory inside. In my case, I have the basically entry level Mac Pro and you can really configure this thing out. So looking at the processors, while I have that 3.5 gigahertz eight core Xeon W processor, you can go all the way up to a 2.5 gigahertz 28 core Intel Xeon W processor with turbo boost up to 4.4 gigahertz. So even though I'm looking at the entry level one, you really can max this thing out. That said, it's gonna cost you an additional $7,000 to go up to that high end CPU option. Similarly for graphics, I again have that entry level graphics card, but when you're configuring through Apple, you can go all the way up to two Radeon Pro W6800X duos with 64 gigs of GDDR6 memory on each of them. So you can really max out these graphics cards. But again, that's gonna cost you $9,600 extra to go up to those high end graphics card configurations. Both machines, the 16 inch MacBook Pro and 2019 Mac Pro can be outfitted with eight terabyte SSDs upon order. But that said, as with almost everything we've talked about, the graphics, the RAM, and the storage here, you can configure all of that after the fact on the Mac Pro. You can add, swap, remove, whatever you need to do for all of those options. But your CPU is gonna be stuck with what you bought at time of purchase. Let's talk about ports. The 16 inch MacBook Pro has four Thunderbolt 4 ports that were type C. It also has a high impedance headphone jack as well as a MagSafe 3 charging port, an SDXC card reader, and an HDMI 2.0 video output. On the Mac Pro, we have some similar options available. There are four type C Thunderbolt 3 ports, there is a headphone jack. There are two USB 3.0 type A ports located on that IO card there towards the top. And at the bottom are two 10 gigabit ethernet ports alongside two HDMI outputs. The MacBook Pro supports Wi-Fi AX, which is Wi-Fi 6 as well as Bluetooth 5.0. And my Mac Pro supports 802.11ac Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.0. Other benefits of the MacBook Pro, it is an all-in-one device, which means we have several things built in that we just don't have on the Mac. So for example, we do not have Touch ID on the Mac. It does come with a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse or trackpad, but you do not have Touch ID built into the keyboard like we even see with the new 24-inch iMac. The new MacBook Pro does have Touch ID in that built-in keyboard. It has a large glass trackpad there, which is gorgeous. I love the Bluetooth trackpad as well on the Mac Pro. Another benefit of the MacBook Pro is it does have the FaceTime camera, the new 1080p FaceTime camera there. Another minor difference here is speakers. So the Mac Pro does have a built-in speaker, but I found that it sounds pretty crummy. The ones on the new MacBook Pro actually sound far better. It's that new six speaker array, it can support Dolby Atmos and all of that. That said, for a lot of people on the desktop, they're gonna prefer a set of desktop speakers instead. 
I think it's time that we go ahead and look at some benchmarks on these two machines. Starting off with Geekbench. Geekbench is a standard that we use a lot of the time and we are running the latest version of Geekbench on both of these two machines. So how did they fare? Looking at the CPU test, my 6-inch MacBook Pro managed to pull an incredible 1769 on a single core and a 12308 on the multi-core. My Mac Pro, on the other hand, only managed a 1041 on the single core and an 8523 on the multi-core. Of course, we're looking at a 10-core CPU versus an 8-core CPU, but you can't escape the fact that a single core score is much, much higher on the 16-inch MacBook Pro. Looking at the graphics test, my AMD Radeon Pro 580X with 8 gigs of memory got a 2735 on that graphics test, whereas the new MacBook Pro and Apple Silicon managed a 68950. That's just an incredible disparity between these two machines. And we went and looked up the published benchmarks of the higher end Mac Pros, and you need to spend $11,000 to get comparable CPU performance on a Mac Pro. That difference is astonishing. We get that Apple Silicon is great, but compared to these desktop processors, Apple Silicon is still winning. You cannot get, you cannot escape those single core CPU scores that we're getting with Apple Silicon. And yes, you can expand a lot in the Mac. You can add new graphics cards and all that, but you can't upgrade the processors. So if you got any of those lower models of the Mac Pro, these new MacBook Pros are going to outperform you. It's just inescapable. We then turned to our video export test. So I loaded up Final Cut Pro with a 52 minute and 45 video file, the latest episode of HomeKit Insider. So it's a 4K video and the output file was about eight gigs in just your standard Apple compatible format. For our 16 inch MacBook Pro with Apple Silicon on the inside of that 32 core GPU, it only took 17 minutes and eight seconds to finish that export. What did it get on our Mac Pro? It ended up taking more than an hour. Yeah, an hour and six minutes to complete that entire export. We're looking at a huge difference between 17 minutes and an hour and six minutes to export the same video file. Let's take a moment to talk about the expandability of the Mac Pro. The Mac Pro is an amazingly modular machine which is what makes it so enticing to a lot of pros out there. You can add additional GPUs. You can outfit it with more storage. You can add additional IO. There is a lot of options with the Mac Pro that you can make it move to your preference, what you need to get your job done. Whereas something like the 60 inch MacBook Pro, it's stuck how it is. I can't change anything on it. I can't add more RAM. I can't add a better GPU. I can't add different ports. I'm stuck with what it has. And for that reason, the Mac Pro still has a place. And of course, the Mac Pro is a couple years old at this point, coming out in 2019 versus two years newer and running Apple Silicon. I'm sure an updated version of the Mac Pro with Apple Silicon would completely crush the 16 inch MacBook Pro. But there are still a lot of people using Mac Pros out there. And this is a really interesting test. Personally, I've outfitted mine with a lot of additional storage. I've put in new MPX modules, new hard drives, and new solid state drives to help accommodate my video workflow. I have internal backups, I have RAID configurations for video projects, and then I have external sources that I still export to via Thunderbolt 3. There's just a lot of stuff that I've customized to my workflow and going to a MacBook Pro for that would require a whole bunch of external components. So there still is a place for the Mac Pro. But the fact that you can't replace the CPU and the incredible performance of Apple's CPUs in its new machines makes me a little bit jealous, especially with that video export time is just absolutely bananas. It is so, so, so much faster. The fact that it only took me like 15 minutes to export that video file that would take me like over an hour or something on my Mac Pro, it just, it makes me weep a little bit. 
I want to know what you guys think. What do you guys think of the Mac Pro versus the 16 inch MacBook Pro? If you guys are in the market for either of these two machines, you know I've got links down below in the description and otherwise I'll check y'all out in the next video.